guess what came? My package. My bed. In there. What? <laughs> Lego. Happy summer, everyone. Before we get started, I figure we should address the elephant in the room, or dare I say the bear. So, meet Bert. And moving on, today I'm super excited. My bed came in the mail. It fits in this box, which freaks me out. Per my friend's request, hello Max, hello Mary, I'm doing a unboxing video and currently I'm opening my knife, which is also World Race Gear, just killing two birds with one stone today. This is the Leatherman knife. We're gonna get going. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Wrong way. Flip her around. Uh -oh. This is super sharp. Highly recommend. Normally I use safety scissors. I'm so excited. Here it is. My sleeping pad. And my sleeping bag. I'm so excited. So before I go over the products that I purchased and why, I want to tell you guys the guidelines that we were given by our trip coordinator so that you know what to look for when you're purchasing your own sleeping pad and sleeping bag. So first, I'm going to talk about sleeping pads. So the main two brands that people typically purchase from are Big Agnes and Thermarest. So they're the highest quality ones, they're decent prices, but the differences between the two are that the Big Agnes sleeping pads are mainly air, like an air mattress, whereas Thermarest have a little bit more to it. They actually seemed thinner to me, but for some reason there's something else to it um, that is not just air that you're sleeping on. Um, the Thermarest pads aren't as easily punctured, so I have to be more careful about that because I purchased a Big Agnes sleeping pad. Um, but the Big Agnes ones are more cushiony, like they have more to it. Um, and if you're a side sleeper, you want that. Um, whereas in the Thermarest ones, like I said, they're thinner, so they don't have as much as um, of the cushioning on it. And they're typically bigger than the Big Agnes sleeping pads. Um, but overall, people love both of them. And one of the ones I actually tried at REI was by the Nemo brand. It was the Nemo Cosmo insulated sleeping pad. And that was super comfortable. It was just a little bit more pricey, so I didn't end up going with that one. Um, but that's a really good one to look at as well. Now I'm going to tell you guys the information that I have about sleeping bags. The biggest decision you have to make when buying a sleeping bag for a world race or any backpacking trip in general is if you want a down bag or a synthetic bag. So the biggest difference is I made a little chart because this is the information that we were given by our trip coordinator. So she said that most people go with synthetic bags. Um, they are heavier and they don't pack as easily, but they're no problem when they're wet and they're cheaper. Whereas down bags are lighter and they pack smaller, but they're, they tend to be more expensive and they're a lot harder to dry. So when I went to REI, I was planning for sure on getting a synthetic bag and I was only looking at synthetic ones um, to consider buying. But when I talked to a worker, because they brought out a synthetic bag in its packaging, and they're pretty big, like it looks like a bag that I would just have regularly, like not for a backpacking trip. Um, whereas the down bags were much smaller and that caught my attention because knowing the size of a backpack that I'm gonna have for nine months to pack everything in, um, and I already have to fit a 10 and everything else in there, I was looking for anything I'm buying to be as small as possible. So the down bags definitely were more attractive to me because they were much smaller, and they were as much as a pound lighter than the synthetic bags, which again, when you're packing for nine months, you want things to be as light and as small as possible because every ounce counts basically when you're packing. So I talked with them about my concerns with it not drying as fast and it being more expensive, but they said that now the down sleeping bags are typically treated with, what was it called? A hydrophobic down something that basically goes over the bottom half of the bag, which is the part that normally takes the longest to dry, and it protects it from water damage so that you don't typically run into those same problems as you would have in the past when the bags weren't treated with those things. So that helped me with the decision about the water problem. And I also, that's why I purchased a dry bag, which you'll see or have already seen um, in the video to go over the sleeping bag when I'm traveling with it. The price wasn't that different and from a synthetic bag, you can find better down bags that are a little bit more expensive and they, they can be like even smaller. But I'm happy with the bag that I've purchased. 
and I'm willing to do whatever I have to to protect it from getting wet in order to have the saved space and weight. Just like the tents, some popular brands for sleeping bags are the REI brand or Kelty or Marmot, so sort of the same idea. Now I'm ready to show you guys what it all looks like and how it all packs down, and it's gonna be a good time. For my sleeping pad, I went to REI and I tried, like literally they have all these pre-blown up air pads that you can lay on and figure out which is most comfortable for you and fits your price range and all that stuff. And this is one of my favorite ones, which happened to be one of the cheaper ones. Um, it's the Big Agnes Insulated Air Core Ultra Sleeping Pad. And it's orange, and it's cute. I'm short, I'm 5'2", so I was able to get the smaller one, which is like $10 cheaper. Mine is 20 inches wide and 48 inches. What? Oh, that's a problem. I think I ordered the four foot one. I was supposed to get petite, which is 66 inches long. The regular is 72 inches. Come on. It's really cute and little. I did. I got the four foot one. Well, I'm a stupid head. I'm just going to have to return this and get the petite one because I'm definitely not only four feet tall, but I'm just gonna show you. This is what it looks like when it comes out. It rolls flat and then you open it. See, I'm acting like I've done this before. I have not. Now, another cool thing that I bought that they showed me at REI is this Big Agnes Pump House Ultra Sleeping pad inflation pump and I wasn't gonna get it because it seemed unnecessary to me because you can blow these up just by like blowing in it takes like three to five minutes but this doubles as a dry bag which will go around my sleeping bag to protect it from water damage when I'm traveling so this is what I'm going to use to blow it up and I'm really pumped about it I need to point out that pun that I unintentionally made about using a pump for my sleeping bag and then I said I'm really pumped about this so just know that if you don't get this you're fine you can totally blow it up just by like blowing on it yourself. This is what that looks like so it just unrolls. It's gonna connect on right here so I'm just going to Okay, so I've officially inflated it and I want to show you just like this. Oh, yeah guys, I'm gonna be so comfortable. Okay, here we go with the sleeping bag. There she is, she's purple. I got the Kelty Cosmic Down 20 women's sleeping bag. Lots of words. I mean, that's small. I think I can compress it even smaller. I am a man. <laughs> okay. I love the colors. It's so pretty. Check it out. There we go. Okay. Oh! I'm a sister. And it's warm. Whew, I am sweating. Thermal comfort hood and natural fit foot box. Yeah, so this was big because I was not wanting a mummy style sleeping bag. So here's like a normal one. Okay, so like that at the bottom. And there is a spoon shape, which is a lot of the Nemo brand, which are super expensive, but like the nicest sleeping bags. And they're more of like, like a middle ground. They're just sort of rounded, so it's roomy, but still narrower at the feet. And then there's a mummy size bag, which literally like completely tapers in at the bottom. So that's what I ended up getting, surprisingly. I did not think I'd want that. But I feel like I still have a lot of room in the foot area, at least on this bag. Um, some of them are REI looked really narrow, um, but this one didn't feel that bad. Total weight of 2 pounds and 13 ounces, which is really good. Now I'm going to show you how I would put the sleeping bag back in the dry bag that it comes with. Oh. 
I am sweating right now, but I'm sure I will get used to it. So this is the size it comes down to. This is when I would use the Pump House Ultra Sleeping Pad Inflation Pump as a dry bag. Close that and then fold this down, I'm pretty sure. There is my sleeping bag in the dry bag, all put together and ready to go in my backpack. For the sleeping pad, super easy. So basically you have these two different valves right here and then the smaller one is out. So all you have to do is open that and all the air comes out. I just deflated the whole air pad and rolled it up. So now I'm gonna close this valve again and then put it back in the bag that it came with. And just so you guys know, it also came with a repair kit just in case there is a rip. So I'm anticipating that there won't be any, but just so you know, they do provide that for you. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you and that I gave all the information um, that you needed when deciding what kind of sleeping bag and sleeping bad, sleeping pad to buy. And I wish you the best of luck in buying your own uh, gear for World Race. It's super exciting and I'm really having fun going through all of it. But thanks again for watching and I will see you guys very soon. That ending was lacking some serious excitement. I genuinely am so happy right now and having a great time editing this and knowing that I'm literally leaving so soon. Smile if you have not smiled yet. Have a good rest of your day. Hey, hey. Ooh, you thought I was gonna dab, <laughs> but I didn't. Oh, gotcha. Bye.